Howdy friends, so another weekend out here. It's pretty nice outside right now. It's supposed to rain here in a few hours. Temperature's all right, low 50s, so spring is a coming. Anyway, today we're just going to, I'm gonna take all these pieces of wood off here and just expose this whole back end here. Um, I only drove my little car today, so I don't really have, I need like a 12 footer to replace the bad section here and i don't know what i'm going to need for those two sections there to replace i uh, only have one eight footer today here um, i'm gonna look under my tarp out there to see if i have any other two by sixes but um, um i will have to drive my truck here at some point to get all this subfloor here so i'll try to cram as much lumber in there all, all at once as i can so anyway yeah today we're just gonna do mending plates where I need to on the outer edges and here and such and like here there uh, take the plumbing out um, I'm, I didn't I don't have any new pipes uh, but I'll just uh, use my uh, um, torch to loosen up all the fittings and get it out of here so yeah just prepping this area today is the goal we'll see if I get anything else on the docket, but for now, we're just gonna do that. Presto, and we got this all cleared out like magic. Um, yeah, so, and then I just put <laughs> the spaghetti mess of electrical wires up here for now, just to get keep them out of the way. And now we'll see which ones need to be replaced. Well, as I am one to do, I brought my propane uh, soldering kit here, but the striker is not in there, so I got nothing to light it. So I'll just use the pipe cutter and cut, you know, the pieces that I'm not going to be using anyway and worry about resoldering them later and whatnot. So, yeah, we'll cut instead of heat and disassemble. All right, here I'm just using one of those cheap little uh, clamp-on copper cutting tools. You just uh, put it over that, clamp it down, and start spinning, and it slowly cuts through the pipe, and it works pretty good. Here's a perfect example of why I'm probably just going to, instead of, you know, removing all this copper and then reusing it with just new soldering, is, you can see, like... I haven't stepped on this or anything, but we have a puncture right here. So I don't know if it was a frozen pipe type thing or, or what happened. But anyway, so we'll just replace it with all new stuff. And, uh, or I'll, you know, I'll take it all apart. I'll just inspect each piece individually and see how good they are. But yep, we got some splits places. So we'll just take it all out of here and start new. I wasn't really planning on replacing this section is in pretty decent shape, except for where the water outlet for the toilet, um, there was probably a really slow leak or just um, condensation on it or whatnot. So this is a little soft here. It's not super bad, but I'm not really impressed with it. So might as well, got her open as it goes. So just replace what I can make this as uh, solid as I can right here I was just cutting on the center piece there so I could only use my saw for so much and then I had to do the hand sawing so kind of a pain but it's still nice to have the break here on one of those members so it just keeps it stronger and I had to do it on, on two different ones there but we got her done Other than this being a little soft here, the other reason it was a good idea to get rid of this was that there was a good crack in the 2x6 here. It does extend in here, but it's in the middle. And obviously I cut it on the end here, so it's still gonna be plenty structurally sound. So I've had to do so many of these nail plates, a lot more than I thought I was gonna have to do. Um, gets really tedious. And so I'll just show you a few more of these. Uh, but yeah, it gets quite boring and I don't wanna have you too bored so anyway here you go all right i don't 
don't see any increase in splittage. So I think we actually got it in there tight and made it stronger than it was with that little crack in it. So we'll put the notches in this one where they should be. Hey, look, another nail plate with the pneumatic nailer. So I think we might just have one or two more for this video. All right, got these in there without much fanfare. And we just traced the old notch places on this one. They don't have to be perfect, just good enough for pipes to go through and not be in the way. And just a couple circular saw cuts and hammer and chisel bangs. Later, we have our notches. Bada bing. Me. Nail plates galore. But I'll cut it short and just show you this one little piece here. And then we'll go on to measuring a piece that I scab into another section that I'm going to remove. And I like doing it this way where I'm able to doing them standing up straight and nailing them in this way. It saves the back for sure. Then we'll go over here to just cutting the section where that piece is going to go in. And this here is, uh, you know, when I took the old subfloor off, just getting rid of some of the glue that was still there. So I just thought I'd show you all how I go about doing that. And I already got most of the uh, staples out, but I'll show you here in a section um, how that works as well since I had never actually really taped that much so here I'm just showing you I kind of turn the chisel upside down when there's a staple in there so when you have it upside down it'll kind of float on top of the 2x4 so you don't dig into it and make a gap that you don't want there so just kind of pound around the staple to get the excess uh, old particle board off and it feels good when the big chunk comes off like that yeah, so I just expose all the staples and then I use a hog, hog wing ring pliers to pull out the old staples and it works pretty well. Uh, I like it better than using the power uh, saws and stuff. So just pull and yank and just keep choking up on it and it comes out pretty well. And I pretty much had to do this to the whole length of the trailer. So I'd spend a lot of time doing this. You can put little boards down to give it a little bit more uh, leverage, but you know, only had a few to go here, so I just went with that. So I'm gonna just continue to clean it up. You know, use sometimes you use a hammer to get some of that out of there, and works pretty well. And sometimes you can't get it all, so heck, you just pound it down in there and flush. So. Yep, getting it all clean. And sometimes doing this, I'll dig a little bit into the, you know, 2 by 6 underneath the glue. But when I put the new subfloors on, it's going to fill in those gaps anyway. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And just moving on down the line here. This is where that uh, last shear wall in the... Uh, front living room was that I'd finally taken out and these pieces were hiding under there and had a little few staples to get rid of and leftover particle board so really nice to have that aspect of it uh, cleaned out so hope you enjoy watch me clean that up Well, just when I thought I was done with replacing fuller joists up here, I forgot about this one that was by the fireplace. And uh, at some point, uh, a spark came out of the fireplace and almost burned this whole place down, I suppose, at one point. I'm assuming it was when the previous tenant lived here. But it 
could have been while I was here because I, I did burn the stove a few times and left the front door open a bunch so who knows but anyway I mean it's still fairly solid here it's not like it's rotten but it did take a significant chunk burned away down here at the bottom um, both sides so I thought about scabbing a piece in maybe just putting some like three quarter inch plywood on both sides but no oh well yet again since we're here and there was a cut really close to the burn might as well just cut this off and i'll probably end up using this it's about an eight foot board so it'll end like you know obviously right there and then when i have the 12 footer this eight footer was going to end right here but since we'd have an ending here i don't want it so close there so i'll put the 12 footer and then i'll use like a 10 footer and then and then have a break right about here I mean, this board's pretty good, but there is one little tiny soft spot, like, right there. I think it's where I have my, you know, interior shear wall, um, and I have to put lag bolts in, like, every other uh, one of these floor joists. And I think there's a little soft spot where the bolt went in the floor joist here, so I might as well have a fresh piece to put it into. So, yeah, we'll do that. All right, y'all, got another day down, and uh, we're almost ready to actually lay some subfloor, at least in this section. Um, next time I come here with my truck, I'll bring a 12-footer to fill in this gap, and then I decided to use the 8-foot piece that was going to match with the 12-feet piece that goes there, and I took out the burn piece from the fireplace, and put this one in there instead so I'll have to bring a 12 footer and then either an 8 footer or probably a 10 footer just to get rid of some of that older wood um, I'd put my air compressor away for the day when I put this one in here so I ended up using just a good old-fashioned hammer hammer and hand nailed these two in it actually went faster than using that air nailer but I wore myself out just doing those two uh, sections there so eh. I'll take a little bit longer and save my uh, my energy uh, doing these and uh, whatnot. So I didn't put one. There's like two of the outer rim joists meet right there. But that one's just a little bit lower than this one. So I didn't want to put the nail plate there until I, I, I got to get a car jack and just lift it up to even it out. And then I'll put the, the nail plate there. I didn't do it on the far one down there because that board there i think i'm gonna put a fresh one in there and that one's fine but it's just older wood so i don't know uh, ocd thing on that i guess but so when we get a sunnier day i'll replace that and uh yeah so other than that i obviously you can see this wall is no longer here for some reason i kept it there forever i think because i was using these two plugs uh often and I just felt they needed to be on a wall, but they work just fine hanging from the ceiling. So anyway, got rid of this and then and then continued on down with getting rid of the little two by fours that are in the center here. Obviously, I'll put them back up when I'm ready to go back on the ceiling. But uh, yeah, so that's what we did today. And it did end up raining uh, halfway through the day which no big deal being in here, but it did drop the temperature quite a bit. So it is quite chilly this evening, but it is not December, so not complaining. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed it. And if you like it, subscribe. And I appreciate you all being here, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, take care.